Hi and welcome to the YouTube tutorial for the ITC Marketing Achievement Standard 91382. This achievement standard is about developing a marketing plan and also doing this for a new or existing product. The key with this is to ensure that you read all of the information prior to each question that is asked of you. It's there to support you in answering each assessment question. There are levels of answering to receive an achievement, achievement with merit or achievement with excellence. This is a YouTube tutorial to help you understand a better way of each assessment question. So we're going to start with making sure that you fill out the assessment questionnaire or assessment template. Um, just here it says student name, class, it's got an area for signature, it has an area for the tutor and the due date. So all you need to fill in is your name, your class is what school you were attending at the moment, so your high school. Please sign it, this is an NDQA document. And also for tutor, you can just put gateway or work experience. And the due date just put today's date for now so now that's uh, done just make sure if you aren't typing into this document uh, that you are writing with a blue or black pen if you do make any mistakes please make sure that you actually use crossing it out not white out so don't use twink um, obviously you need to make sure that you answer every single question in the assessment and the reason is because if you don't attempt a question we cannot mark it. We will send you back your achievement standard for you to re-attempt those questions you've missed. So everything must be checked off to make sure you've attempted every question. Obviously we will give you the opportunity to resit any questions if you need to. So that means if you have made any mistakes we'll be sure to send you back just the areas that you need to fix up and then you can return that again. Uh, the instructions are going to be sent to your coordinator who has organized this um, workbook for you. Uh, so when you're actually thinking about marketing and as the marketing manager of ITC, the International Travel College myself, uh, you need to obviously understand what you're marketing. So you need to choose a company or organization that you might be interested in, understand, know a little bit about or have access to information about. And the reason is because you want to be able to answer the questions thoroughly in order to get that excellent mark. Uh, so I guess the first thing you've got to do is pick that company. Is it an organization that you've worked in? Is it something that has a really good website and information that you can go and get from? Um, once you've done that, uh, you need to have a little think about the kind of core activities that that company has. And that means, how does it get its money? So does it sell clothing? Is it to do with travel? Is it um, professional makeup? Do they sell products? Do they do provide services? And that's how they gain their money as a business. So what is their core activity in getting that revenue or that money? Um, we've given you some examples of a objective or a purpose for a company. Um, the reason is because once you've chosen your company and worked out what kind of core activities that they do to gain revenue or money, you need to also have a look as well as what's their vision, what is their values. And most companies have like a mission statement, so that's what we're looking for there. So let's get to the first question. Task one, it's asking you for the chosen company to please write any of their core activities. To look for these core activities, have a look on their website. It will list maybe what they're selling or if you know the company well, go in there and have a look and see how do they sell things, how do they get money. Uh, if it's a service like a plumber or an electrician, then what kind of services do they provide? That is their core activity. So that's for task one. The more thorough the answer or the better the answer in regards to really looking into all the things that get revenue or money for that company, the better that you will get the marking. Um, B is asking you then to write their objective. This is their big purpose 
obviously for ITC for example we want to be the first choice of travel and tourism training um, in New Zealand and in of course not just domestic but international students as well um, so that's our vision that's our purpose of wanting to make sure that we're quality educators so the company that you've chosen may have a similar or same type of vision that they want to succeed for their customers um, C Describe the current or new product that the company you have chosen provides. So you need to choose a product now. Now, obviously, when you've chosen just one product, it's a good idea to choose one that has a lot of information about it because we are going to be asking you more questions relating to that product. D, what is the objective for that product? So I guess objective is about you asking the question, what do they want the customer to get out of this product? So you've described the product and now you've got to work out what is it that the organizational company wants the customers to get out of that. Do they want to have a smooth process when it comes to service if it's plumbing? Uh, is it maybe a goal of making sure that the product is the only the best color when it comes to makeup or depending on the company choose you need to see what kind of advertising they're doing for that product to be able to work out what the objective is if you're not sure and you really need to know more about it maybe get in touch with the organization and ask them what is it you want the customers to get out of this particular product on your website uh, they may give you a very good answer which is going to have some sales stuff in it as well about what they want to succeed in. Now there are some areas in this workbook which require you to have signatures on the workbook. That's because if you're basing this on a work placement then of course your supervisor or someone who's looking out for you on that placement will need to sign it uh, and of course just put the company name, name and date for them. Um, those sections you'll see here and there's yellow writing okay so now we're up to market research so you've picked a company you've worked out what the company's vision is what their core activities are you've picked a product and you've also written about what they want to get out of selling that product now we're talking about a bit of research this is where you could probably access Google uh, Google will give you hopefully enough information to be able to answer the following assessment questions but first before we do so I'm going to go through with you what some of these different words and phrases are so that you can answer the assessment questions correctly now market research is researching a product or service or anything about the business okay so it's working out the landscape of the business it's going into their website it's grabbing flyers it's interviewing or asking questions in the actual business itself USPs unique selling points are unique selling points for the business that you have chosen so what is it that's different from other businesses so for example, we've written down some information about the International Travel College in the workbook about what's unique to us, what makes us stand out from other education providers that provide the same education as we do. So for example, there are some things to consider. What is the needs of people out there and how can we cater for those needs? How can we stand out and be different? Uh, for us, it's the value for money and also the quality education so adding value to our clients then you've got to think about what the wants are the wants are that people want to walk away with something that's quality they want to get a really good education they won't just want a certificate uh, the demands of course is keeping up with the industry they're keeping up with employment trends making sure that our students have the first initial placement when it comes to getting their dream job how do we get them ahead of all the other applications that are in the line so those are some of the things to think about when it's coming to some unique ways of selling something from a company. Then you've got to think about with market research your target market. What a target market. So SWOT analysis. I guess the key with SWOT analysis as well is to understand and we've outlined it here about what each section is because you will be doing a SWOT analysis in your assessment. Uh, they have outlined that S for strength and it gives you bullet points of some of the ideas that you can think of 
to be able to put an S, W, O, and T. Um, so do go back to those pages and obviously understand that a little bit better when you're doing your own SWOT analysis. Marketing assumptions. Okay, so I guess it's trying to think of um, your strategy and plan now. So you've got to consider everything about this. Uh, you've obviously done your research, um, you've done a SWOT, and you've looked at your competitor analysis. Now, obviously, you need to have a little think about your own product and your own service in order to make sure that you are going to be doing the right thing here. So that's the price of your product. Uh, is it fairly priced? Is it with the same market? For example, hotels. There is actually a full-time job of someone who looks at other pricing of hotels in the area and they adjust their rates accordingly. If there's an event on, it will be astronomically expensive. And if there's no event on and it's during the off-peak season, they'll have to keep it down to a minimum. So they're the first choice over and above other providers. Customer demand. Okay, so will this be an interesting product or service for the customer? Is this actually something that they need? Uh, and then, of course, the competition. Um, is there any new operators out there keeping your eye on the ball at all times to make sure that you have control over the market that you're in? Okay, so task two. Now we're going to be talking about the marketing situation. Um, what we want you to do is we want you to have a look at some market research. So for A, you need to identify now for a product that you have st spoken about in the first task, you need to write down as many unique selling points of that product that you can think of. What is so unique about it that the customers will really, really want? Go back to the USP page, understand what USPs are. We've given you some examples as well. Now it's time for you to look at the product that you've chosen for the company that you chose in task one and work out anything that would be a selling point or a reason to choose it. B. Identify the target market. Who are they selling to? This is where you list all the different types of people that you think would buy or use this product or choose the service. You need to describe each that you have identified. If you've just listed a bunch of different type of people and not described who they are and why they've chosen or why they would choose the product or service, then you will not get, obviously, the higher marks for this. So don't just list a bunch of people, write why you chose them. So C, competitors. Now, I guess the key would be looking at the product or service and work out who else out there does the very same thing. You are going to need two. So you need to work out who else gives the same service or provides the same service or who else provides the same type of product. So when I mean same type of product, if you've chosen makeup, for example, or a company that distributes makeup and you have named the product, which might be uh, bronzer, then you need to obviously go to a competitor and pick bronzer for that and then research that. You cannot choose all different products to compare to because that's comparing two different things. So it has to be the same product or service. Now, where it says name of competitor one, that's the name of the company who is a competitor or a person who does sell the same products and services. Uh, we want you to then name the product that you've chosen. Again, it needs to be the same product that all the companies provide. Put the price that they have priced it as and then how on earth do customers get it? Can they purchase it online? Do they go into a store? Um, do they phone up? Is it a, a click and buy situation? Is it a click and collect situation? And promotion. How does that organization actually advertise it? Do they put it in a catalog? Is it on a website? Have you seen it on social media? Then you do the same thing, but with another different competitor. So two different competitors selling the same products or services and go through the same different questions in the empty template. D, now based on your research with those two competitors, we want you to complete a SWOT analysis. 
we want you to look at the company you chose, not the competitor, but the company you chose in task one. What are their strengths, weaknesses, what are some opportunities, and what are some threats? Now, go back to the pages for the SWOT analysis. Strengths are what do they do well? What is unique as a resource uh, that they could potentially draw on? And what do other other people see as their strengths. You're an outsider, for example, so you'd be able to look at their website and see what kind of strengths you think they have. Weaknesses, what could they improve on? Where do they have fewer resources than others? You've just done research on competitors, where's the gaps? What are others likely to see as their weaknesses as well? Opportunities, so maybe have a look at some of the trends out there when it comes to this type of business. What are they missing? What are some things that they could look into? And then the threats. The threats are what could harm them? What could actually be more than just competition? And what could they expose themselves to? So that is a SWOT analysis based on the company that you've chosen in task one, not of the competitors, and so make sure that you've done it about the company that you're focusing on. E, based on your research now, we want you to describe some marketing assumptions. Now, we did talk previously in the previous pages about what marketing assumptions mean. So in regards to price, this is where you've got to look at, is the product priced fairly? Do you think that their prices are actually competitive in the market? And what some things that they may offer to help that price look attractive? Customer demand. Okay, so are they meeting all the demands of the customers? Remember the opportunities and threats part of your SWOT analysis? Did anything come out of that? Can you see that maybe there are a few demands that they're missing? Or do you think that they're the leader who provide this customer products and services because actually they do a lot more than what their competitors do. And lastly, competition. How do they weigh up with their competition? Are they ahead of the game or could they improve slightly? This is to do with assumptions of the competition and based on your research. So now we're getting into the last section of your assessment. This is all about strategy and plans. So if you want to do marketing as your future job potentially, or you're interested in it, this is going to be a really great thing for you to understand. There is a lot more that meets the eye when it comes to marketing. You can't just go out there on social media and advertise something. As you've already worked out, you need to research your company, you need to understand them, and then once you've understand them and the other people that provide the same thing, you can find those little gaps and fill that gap with some marketing. However, when you're looking to do that, you need to think about budget. Now that's to do with money. So what is a budget? I guess it's how much it costs to advertise your brand or your product or your service or to advertise the little gaps that you've just found in the market that you want to fill. Overall expenses. Okay, so what's it going to cost to the company? Now I guess it would be a little bit difficult for you to understand if you've never had to advertise and pay advertising on social media. But there are some costs that you can look at out there to get an idea of how much it would cost you. Brand awareness. What's it going to cost to advertise? And I guess it could be, is it going to cost to put something in print? How much would it cost to actually physically print something? I guess you could do a lot of stuff in-house like we do at ITC. I do all the design and I do all the advertising. So therefore our costs are down to a minimum. But we do paid advertisement using social media, TikTok, Instagram and Facebook. We also promote on Google advertising as well. So I guess how many customers do you need to get to? Because the bigger the advertisement, the more it's going to cost. And what is the profit going to be? For us, I guess what we do is we work out how much it's going to cost, how many inquiries we get in, and how many of those inquiries will convert into enrollments. Therefore, we work out what we get from that enrollment, and we deduct the cost that we did to market it, and there's our profit. 
So is it worth it? Have we spent more advertising than we have actually getting customers? And that's where you've got to measure things. Return of investment is what that means. It's you pay for something, you get money from the customer because you've just paid to actually get them, and then the customer spends money. So there's your customer, that cost you money, they spend money, what's the difference that you get out of that? That's a return of investment. So there is also something else to discuss here, SMART. I guess one of the things to look at with your marketing plan is what SMART is, is S is obviously for specific. Okay, so specific, specific is what do I want to do? I want to drive visitors to a website. How do I do that with Google advertising? Okay, so we do the Google advertising and we want to try and get as many visitors to our web page as possible. And then we work out what M is. It's measurable. Okay, so we want to double some website engagement. That means we want to double the amount of people going to our site. And of course, then there's A, achievable, aspirational. Okay, so by boosting that website engagement, getting more visitors, we will drive our brand awareness. Therefore, people will see us. And then there'll be a number of extra people that are purchasing or clicking things on our website. And then R is realistic and relevant. So the number of monthly visitors could be, say, an extra thousand people visiting our website. And maybe we do this by doing a blog each week about different themes. So therefore, our goal is actually attainable. Can we afford to hire someone to write that blog? Or do we get someone in-house to do it for us? So it's not going to cost us extra and there's just a little bit of extra workload. And then finally, T. Timely. Can we achieve this within a space of time? So SMART is really breaking down our plan to make sure that we're covering all areas. So I guess with some of the SMART measures, there's different ways of looking at it. Maybe we want to do something like uh, a send an email out. So again, specific. I want to achieve maybe half of those people who get the email to open it. M, measurable. Okay, our target. Oh, wow, they actually will hit 40% maybe when they actually open it. By using something like MailChimp, you'll be able to measure that. Achievable. Okay, so you have improved the email opening rate and maybe you've even got people to click on it. Realistic and relevant. Our research shows that obviously the brand's been able to boost the opening rate, rates and maybe by showing people things more frequently, it's going to actually make that product more relevant to them. And they'll think of us when they want to click and purchase. Timely. Well, how long will this potentially take? This could take to four months, for example. So SMART is breaking down those areas into different sections for a plan. Marketing activity, the fun stuff. Okay, so this is where you get your creative side on. This is where you've actually got to think of how can I put this product service brand in the people's face? Is it through maybe a poster? Is it an advertisement? Is it a video clip? Is it maybe a series of different images that may speak to them? Um, is it maybe showing them our brand in the true light of what it should be used for? Uh, is it using current customers and showing them that they're using their brand so others will want to follow? There's all sorts of different ways of marketing. And I guess one of the key things is to reflect on this workbook. Look at all the different things that we've put in here for you to have an idea for when it comes to you doing this in your assessment. We've put in here outbound marketing, so that's like cold calling or phoning people. We put inbound marketing, so that's where we attract customers to call us. Uh, digital marketing, okay, so this is where you've got technology in play. You could be using any social media channel whatsoever. A search engine, like Google. Content marketing, okay, so this is more in terms of using like a, a blog or a vlog, um, some videos, ebooks, or maybe some free trials of some sort. Uh, social media marketing is huge. So channels like Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn are all channels that a lot of people are on when it comes to businesses these days, Facebook particularly for businesses. Um, obviously make it relevant to the audience. 
Video marketing is another thing as well, uh, using the use of video content, uh, email marketing, so MailChimp or the use of direct emails, conversational marketing. Now this is face-to-face -face stuff. This is where you may organize meetings, visit suppliers, or try and engage with the customers directly. Buzz marketing, that's another thing that we're trying to use to target maybe with a theme. So you could be working out what's out there at the moment that people love and then piggybacking on that and using that to market your product, like a famous person. Uh, influencer marketing is where that leads into. Could you use maybe, for us, for example, the CEO of an airline, which we have done in the past. Uh, could it be uh, your own graduates that are studying and maybe use them to be the face of the people? Brand marketing, obviously for this it's more visual stuff. So this is more like the creative design side. Uh, word of mouth marketing is really clever because people trust people they know. So you could use the current customer base as well for marketing. So all of those are there and we've explained them in depth in your workbook. So please reflect back on that as well. So marketing action plans. Um, there is a structure in how to do this. So it's making sure you defined your end goal. What do you want to achieve from this? Uh, maybe the steps to follow. Prioritize what's more important than least. Uh, set some milestones, maybe some goals. Identify what resources you'll need. Um, so do you need to have someone to Google advertise? Who could that be and how much will it cost? Monitor and evaluate and update. That's the real important thing. Again, it's that return of investment. How much does it cost you? How much is it going to potentially bring in and what will they bring in? Therefore, what do you make out of it in the end? Is it worth it? Then you've got to think about a con contingency plan. Not everything goes the way you want it to go in marketing. So prepare for the worst and hope for the best is a good saying that we use. Um, I guess it is that you've got to think of a backup plan. So what